This is Balázs Kerek, and this is a special video to the MoGraph.net users, especially for Chris and Duvey and the other guys I've started to chat with. So basically what I wanted to show you is a simple technique that is using uh, simple data, user data, and uh, what uh, it's doing, basically it's something like subframe calculation, and this is not uh, the technique that I found which was based on using the velocity of the null object to create some effect like this. This is real subframe calculation and how it's being done. So basically, if I set this to zero, this remains the same. So basically right now I am editing one particle per frame and uh, they don't have any speed. A simple P store node with a null object connected to the positions. So as you can see, there are huge gaps between the particles and the faster I move, the bigger the gaps are, obviously. And this is because the Expresso is ba based on the frames and it is calculated every frame. So if you move uh, too much between two frames, obviously, it will, generate, uh, the it will generate the points, but there will be gaps. So what I have done is I set this to like something like 10. As you can see, uh, instantly it is generating subparticles, and uh, what well, it, it's pretty fast. So basically, as you can see right now, w in uh, 90, mm, 83 frames, I have 900 particles. And how this is working? So basically, here's the p-storm, here's the null object, and what I'm using is I'm using the previous states. Sorry for the pronunciation. I don't really know how to <laughs> say this word, but. I'm using the previous position and the current position and I subtract the two and uh, then I divide that vector to real values uh, I mean I convert it to real values using the adapter and uh, after that I'm dividing all of the x, y and z values with the iteration count so basically I will have I will have uh, I will have these numbers and then I convert it back to vectors and simply multiply it with the iteration and after that I add it to the position of the uh, to the current position of the null object and this can be uh, th this is the solution what is working and of course if you understand how a p-storm node works basically you have an un option and also you have uh, an enabled option and what happens here is that uh, this uh, node will check whether if it can or can't run on a current frame but uh, it it uh, whenever it gets a new position it will it will run again and again so basically what happens here is that between two frames with the iteration i enable this pistol node uh, based on the iteration time based on this this uh, based on this uh, so basically basically the count uh, of the iteration will end up uh, emitting uh, particles per frame so basically we will have sub particles this is uh, the most obvious usage of this and of course this is working very good and uh, if you of course know how fast your null object or your object will uh, go you can have a value which is uh, optimized so you won't have huge gaps only only little gaps and of course there are one artifact with this technique so if you start uh, getting crazy and start to move your m move your emitter very fast as you can see I'm y using a circular shape but uh, uh, of course Expresso calculates only one frame uh, every frame of course and uh, it calculates only one position and between those they are not real points so they they are not stored or anything like that but they are being generated so if you, uh, it it could be done. So basically, we can have uh, some smoothin smoothness here using uh, triangular functions and uh, and using a sine and cosine wave and checking in each dimension where the particle is moving based on the null object. And you could you could do that, but uh, I think you don't need to because using this technique, uh, you you can get your particles and. Uh, What's good about this is that uh, I going back to scene. So here, ha here I have a standard emitter which which is turned on. The subframes are turned on, and I shot a lot of particles. And I can have, of course, a child emitter. 
and uh, I want to generate continuously and uh, of course this will be a lot of particles so I, I will do one particle and subframes so you will see that this is this is uh, getting very great so I'm going to show this so right now as you can see I have like uh, 50,000 particles and uh, it uh, still works on a reasonable uh, reasonable speed and uh, of course what's good about this is I'm going to delete this child emitter for now I don't want that and uh, of course you will see that this is this is very smo uh, smooth motion and uh, what you can do with this of course you can have a lot of particles here and uh, it works very fast because the points are not really generated they are just uh, generated for the particles and after that they move with the with the position they have but uh, what's good about this is uh, you can have a particular like uh, I, I'm working on this right now so basically I want to get close to the particular system in Cinema 4D and the uh, subframes are needed for this so basically I'm optimizing the pyro cluster as well the usage of the pyro cluster because it's it's much faster than most of people think about this and to show you this I'm going to delete f the age functions for now and uh, what you will see is that uh, I have 18 1800 particles 18000 sorry and uh, it 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 was being generated in 9 seconds or so and of course if I enable the age functions uh, what you will see is of course uh, at the first frame sometimes you will have an artifact and you have to uh, restart it because the position is stored uh, from the latest sta stage so that's why there are something there so as you can see if I enable the age the it will generate my particles and uh, it's I think it's uh, very fast so if if you have tried to use the pyro cluster with the fire uh, preset or something like that you will know that 14 seconds in particles is very great and uh, to to sum up this I'm going to show you a little example so I'm going to use this so basically this is a four second animation and it was done in about uh, five minutes on two computers so 150 frames in five minutes in CAD C4D I think it's very very good so this is all I wanted to show you and I hope you uh, like this technique and uh, I hope it helps uh, to uh, make your workflow even better and, uh, and I really hope you like this and uh, I, I wanted to share this with you first because uh, I think uh, you're very help some of you are very helpful on the forums especially Chris and Duve and uh, and uh, so basically that's all I wanted to say, so have a nice day and goodbye.